What's your wildest story that sounds too far-fetched to be true? In 1987 my dad and his buddies were at a bar in the small town of Fermont, Quebec town way up north in Canada. For whatever reason they each signed their names on the $10 bills they had, joking that it'd be funny if one day they got the bill back as changed somewhere else. Fast forward to 1992 my mom and dad moved to Vancouver during some rough economic times where he got laid off from his job. He ended up doing trade school and got a job as a mechanic for a little while before getting his old job back and moving back to his hometown. Vancouver is on the exact opposite side of Canada, about 5500 kilometers away from Fermont. They end up going to dinner one night and he gets 10 bucks back as change, he turns the bit around and there's his signature. Edit. Appreciate the karma guys. Cheers. Mine is when I was in high school I lived out in the countryside of central Texas. I was just kind of bumbling around on the property and my mom's little chihuahua was tagging along. I heard a bird, saw a fast moving shadow, and threw my arm out, slapping a hawk out of the sky as it tried to get my mom's chihuahua. Cut my arm pretty good, but saved that little rat of a dog. The chihuahua went on to pass away as a smooth 19 years old. I got grabbed by plainclothes cops one night while biking home. Random drug search. I had my backpack full of porn mags a friend had been borrowing, so that was pretty embarrassing for 17 year old me. In the middle of the search, cops in uniform rush in and arrest the plainclothes ones who were apparently fake cops hustling people for drugs and cash. So I had to show my porn pack to them as well and I had to testify against the fake cops in court telling the entire room about my porn pack. Now that is a series of unfortunate events. I was surfing in Santa Barbara County when I was a kid, maybe 14 or 15. When I would come in from a surf, I had the habit of undoing my leash from my leg while I was walking in the shallow water. Unbeknownst to me, the other side of the leash that connects to the board had come off. I lost my leash. I searched around the tidal zone but no luck. I was bummed, but I just moved on. Three weeks later, I was surfing in Ventura County, and as I was walking in from the surf, a piece of kelp wrapped around my leg. I reached down to pull it off. It wasn't kelp, it was my leash I'd lost a dozen miles north a few weeks back. It had algae and stuff growing on it, but no mistaking it was absolutely my leash. If you love it, set it free. If it comes back, it's meant to be. First time I ever smoked pot a police helicopter hovered above me and my friend and hit us with the spotlight. They were looking for someone else apparently because they immediately moved on. Nonetheless. I'm sorry you had to experience that, but that's also hilarious aff. Paranoia must have been through the roof after that lol. I went jogging one night and came across a lady laid out face first. No heartbeat. Started doing CPR. Never saw another person was able to call 9 double one while doing CPR. Kept at it 20 minutes till FD got there. She made a full recovery. They said CPR that long has a 95% fail rate. The point of CPR. Just compressions. Kiss of life etc. Ice to revive someone. It's just to keep oxygen flowing round their body. Basically somebody has been switched off, but you are putting them on standby, so the doctors can switch them back on, was the way it was explained to me. That is correct. The FD had to shock her three times, to get the heart to actually stay beating. Apparently that many shocks is also very rare. I was almost drowned by a pod of dolphins, while surfing at Salt Creek, Orange County, California. I got up on a wave, and one of them knocked me over, two wave pinned down on a 5 to 7 foot day. Dolphins aren't as innocent as they may seem, glad you're safe now. They're not. They're being held hostage and the dolphins forced them to make this post. This shit is offensive, my parents are dolphins. Was in Vegas for a work thing. I was not happy about being there, because it was a tough time in my life. Money was really tight and Vegas is the last place you want to be when money is tight. I was telling my buddy about it and he says, I'm going to PayPal you $150. Go play the poker tournament at the Venetian at night. You can drink for free and hopefully you last long. If you win anything, pay me back. If not, no worries. So I did. Won the tournament. $3,200. 
The second night, I went off to play some craps alone one night because I did not like the work people and did not want to hang with them. Started with $200 45 minutes later I 7 apostrophe D out and had $37,000. Cashed out and told no one. On the drive back, I lived in Phoenix, I called my buddy and told him, only, about it. I sent him $2,500. Edit, multiple spelling errors. Was on phone lol. I took my VW to the dealer to get some work done. The service rep at the counter was so hungover, possibly still intoxicated, that he couldn't handle completing the paperwork. He told the tech that I was a VIP, specifically Britney Spears' brother, and that he owed me a favor, so the work was on the house and they just never did any paperwork, didn't charge me a dime, did the work, handed me the keys, and away I drove. That is extremely odd. I dig it, having been hungover and sometimes even inebriated on the job in my past life, I have given away a ton of free stuff, down to telling people who worked for me that certainly clients were VIPs, and not charging them for labor. Story checks out. An old girlfriend and I went on a hot air balloon ride at a balloon festival about 20 years ago. The way this works is you go up in the balloon, the wind carries you away, someone drives a chase car, usually a van of some sort, to fetch you when the balloon comes down. We came down in this beautiful manicured field that happened to be part of a national lab where Manhattan Project work and early research in radioisotopes was conducted. The field was contaminated and we had to go through the facility's deck and procedures which involved stripping naked and bathing with special cleansers and going through a whole body detector. I'm a huge nerd about the Manhattan Project and I'm 100% envious right now. Even with the surprise shower part. I'm an American from the Midwest. I decided to go to Iceland when it was all the rage a few years back. Found myself several miles off road on a glacier. Decided it was as good a spot as any for lunch. Sit down on a rock and start eating a sandwich. Tia hikers comes up the trail. We say hi, they sound American too. Ask where they're from. They tell me. Oh that's cool, my sister lives there. She works at business. The female hiker gives me a funny look. Is your sister so and so? Yeah. You know her? She's my roommate. I worked in TV news as a videographer, and I was at a wildlife refuge in South Florida. At one point, I walked up to a fence and was shooting video of some ostriches. They walked over to me and stood very close as they seemed very curious about me. I was getting some great close-up shots as one ostrich was lightly pecking at my camera. Then, he reached over, snatched my mix foam windscreen, pulled his head back, and held it in his beak like a cigar. A second later, he gulped it down and stood there, looking at me fat, dumb, and happy. I went back to the station and had to explain what happened so I could get a new foam windscreen. When they called bullshit, I put the tape in the player and showed them the proof. A minute later, I had my new windscreen. I was having a really hard time passing a very large kidney stone between 5 to 6 millimeters. 6 is too big to pass. After 3 weeks of episodic excruciating pain and bleeding, my doctor scheduled surgery to remove it. I wake up the morning of surgery without a lot of pain. Pain came and went. I put on my slippers and was wearing long flannel PJs. I get up from the TV and I feel like there's a pebble in my slipper. The stone dribbled out that morning. Had I not been wearing slippers, that stone would have been lost on the floor somewhere and I would not have known I had passed it. The last hour discovery saved me from surgery. I broke my skull and didn't realize until I was like hang on I've got a dent in my head. Went to the doctors and they were like yup you have fractured your skull and showed me this court scan of a massive creator in my head. Still to this day wondering how the fuck I did it. I used to be a nanny. We would go to a local river on hot days. Well once the foyo lost her pink croc sandal and my god was she devastated. Why? Aside from Crocs being the pinnacle of four year old summer fashion she had put a very cool blue eye charm on it. We searched for the shoe for the better half of an hour with no luck, and so we left. We went to get ice cream, to soothe the harsh sting of grief, and forgot about it until about two weeks later we were at a different park upstream from Lost Croc River and the oldest pointed out some trash caught in some branches at the edge of the river. 
Being kids they went to poke at it, and what do they find? The goddamn pink croc. Blue eye charm and all. How the hell it got 3 miles upstream I have no clue. We figured an animal or something, but that was one of the weirdest things to this day. I learnt about this in school, it's the water cycle, the croc went downstream to the sea, then evaporated into the clouds and it finally rained in the mountains. When I was 18 I was walking home at night through a bad part of town, I'd been smoking, weed with some friends, I passed by a house, that there was a domestic issue happening in, screaming and crying abd all that. Suddenly, I hear a loud bang. I freeze, standing right on the end of the path from the front door to the sidewalk. Suddenly this guy comes running out, a lanky bald crackhead looking for. He doesn't see me till he's right in front of me, he sees me, raises his gun and shoots then keeps running. Somehow, he missed me, I saw down that barrel and somehow he missed. It was like that scene in Pulp Fiction. Anyway, he ran to a car down the road a bit and sped off. I started hearing a child crying in the house and I called the police and said an ambulance was needed too. So yeah, I heard a murder, the killer ran out and almost killed me, but by some divine intervention level shit I was unscathed and the bullet lodged in someone's car and thankfully didn't hurt anyone. When my dad and stepmom met, my dad swore he'd met her before, but couldn't remember when or where. Eventually, he decided he'd seen her in Coddy, Wyoming, the town where he grew up. She swore she'd never even been to Wyoming, she's from Oregon and that's where they met. Several years later, after they'd been married a while, stepmom mentions to her mom that my dad swears he met her in Coddy, but she's never been there. Her mom says yes, you have, and pulls out a photograph from 1956 of her, age 9, riding on a mechanical horse, a kid one, and in the background, standing around in the crowd, is my dad and his two brothers, ages 8, 10, and 11. She submitted the story to a local magazine for a Valentine's Day contest one year and won a trip to a resort. Some honorable mentions, by the time I was 20, I was one degree of separation away from five different people who'd been murdered by three different serial killers, gotta love the PNW, and I almost hit Bob Dylan with my car once. Two weeks in Hawaii on vacation. Last day of the trip. Decide to visit the waterfall where to two from Fantasy Island yells Daplane, Daplane. Hear someone call my name, it was a friend of mine who had dated my best friend Rich in high school. Rich committed suicide some years after high school. We get to chatting and all of a sudden she gets quiet and serious and says, do you realize it's Rich's birthday today? 10 months old, 42C, 108F, fever, convulsions. Three heart stops, the last one doctors gave up, but I came back on my own. Recovered no sequels. 32 years old, covered 19, 11 days in a coma, plugged to breathing machines, woke up, quadriplegic, lost 25 kilograms of muscle, both kidneys stopped, 75% of lungs compromised, lost the gal blood a high blood pressure 32 over 25. Now I'm 34, got my two kidneys working again after a few months of hemodialysis, I'm walking again, but didn't recover all the old muscles back, my lungs work at 100% again, I did had to remove the gal bladder, but I can eat whatever, and I'm still taking pills, to control my blood pressure, but every month I recover more muscle and the doctor prescribes one. Less pill, started with 14, now I'm down to 5, and going strong to 3, doctor already set the date. I went river tubing down a 4 km stretch of glacial river in rural British Columbia. Somewhere over that 4k, I lost my cell phone. I don't love having a cell phone, so I was putting off replacing it. After 9 days of no cell phone, my husband gently indicated it was time for me to go get a new one. I jokingly told him, I don't need to, I have a really good feeling it's going to come back to me. 20 minutes later, the find my iPhone notification appeared on his cell phone, and we got a call saying that a lady's son found my phone after he had fallen out of his tube and stepped directly on my phone. After realizing it didn't feel like a river rock, he reached down and picked my phone up. It was in a life proof case. They took it home and charged it, and now I'm writing this story on said phone. A serious rivalry developed between my bearded dragon and the cat. The dragon trolls the cat and the cat butts and anytime the dragon is getting affection. 
The one day I had the dragon on my lap, sat on the sofa, so the cat started yowling and pacing in front of me. The dragon turns to the edge and takes a running leap landing on the cat. The cat bolts a couple of laps round the living room floor with the dragon somehow holding on. I avoid telling that story because I don't think anyone would ever believe me. The end. Thanks for watching.